In this video, I'll tell you all about the Dysos Pro add-on for Google Sheets. You may already have the regular Dysos add-on, in which case you'll know how the basic features work. If not, then I advise you to take a look at the videos that are to do with the Dysos Basic Edition. And this one's solely going to concentrate on the new stuff that you get when you subscribe to the Pro version. Here's a sheet with the Dysos enabled. Just as a very brief refresher, you can select stuff by clicking on it over on the sidebar and this acts as a filter in the same way that Excel Dysels does. So to get access to these Pro features you need to upgrade which you do through the Upgrade tab and that brings up this little window from the Stripe payment system. Well, it's just a test version so I'm just using an invalid credit card and then, then I can go and that's all there is to it. So you're going to see here now that we've got a Pro subscription and it ends in a year's time and if we go to the settings then you'll see there's a couple of new features, Pro Plan settings in your account. So if we go to your account, we'll see that we've got a Pro version, and that's when it expires. That's the payment reference in case it's needed. And that's the reminder. Now the reminder you can turn off and on, and all it does is just when you get close to needing to renew your subscription, it will give you the odd reminder from time to time. Another way of getting Pro version is to use a coupon. And typically I would issue a coupon to give you a month's free trial or something like that. If you want one to try out the Pro version, then just contact me and I'll let you have one. So now that we've subscribed, we're going to see a bunch more new settings and features open to us. Start. Let's start here. So what we can do here is we can disable the Pro version and what that would do would be to make it fall back to a standard version. So all the features that we're about to look at would be disabled. So we don't want to do that. And we'll come back to these two later on. Over on the DICE screen, you'll see that we've got three new icons that are now enabled. And the first one we'll look at is color. So what this allows you to do is to filter by colors, which is pretty cool. So you can see that we've got all the colors that exist in this column, which is this column here. And we can filter on that. Let's just say that we want just the stuff that's yellow, for example. And we're going to get just that, that one there. Let's get rid of that. And we can use all the same stuff as we did with the values version of the Dysor. And so for example, we can choose multiple colors by clicking this and we'll have the green and the red and the, and the yellow, for example. So we've got those three rows by virtue of what we've ticked here. Now colors can be treated and combined with values. So we want the ones that are just those colors there. And in this column, in the source column, we'll just take the one that Venus, let's say. So now we've combined both Dysors. And we've got now got two rows because we've got matching color, two matching colors, plus also a matching value. So let's clear those away. Turn that back to values just by clicking on the uh, the icon there. Move these around a little bit, and let's look at the next one, which is this this filter here, which is called an or or an and filter. So usually when you select stuff from multiple dicers, the they are the, the results of them are anded together. For a row to be selected, it must match both DICELs that we're showing here. So for example, if I wanted to only show the ones that were, let's say, Earth and Jupiter, then they've both got to be true. But let's just say that I wanted to show Earth plus, in this column, any that are Jupiter. So I can use the OR filter, just convert this to an OR. And now I'm seeing anything that's Earth in the first column or anything that's Jupiter in the second column. And you can treat colors in exactly the same way. So if I was to convert this to be a color filter instead, and what I want to see now is anything that is, let's say, Jupiter in this column, um, but that's white in this column. What we're able to see now is anything that was Jupiter in this first column which is that one and that one, plus anything that's white in this column. So another useful addition is this one, which is the NOT filter. I'll just set that back. So what NOT means is, you can imagine, it means that anything that isn't what's selected. So for example, if I wanted to show any rows that are not white, I can put a NOT filter on, and then I can choose white here. And we go, now we only see the rows that are colored. And of course, we can, we can combine that with another filter too. So we only want to see the rows that are Venus and a nut, and there's the result there. So that's these new dice or icons that you get with the, the Pro version. 
Now we'll take a look at selecting data. So in the standard version, by default, you're, you know, if you've got a sheet like this, in other words, you've got a table that is, isn't starting up at the top left, by default, you're going to get something like this. And of course, we can see the other columns as well, but they're using the A1 notation starting at the first row, and they don't know what the titles are because the first row is blank. So the way you would get around that in the standard version is to go to the data setting, and you might, for example, choose the select range and apply that. And now by doing that, we've limited the DISO scope to just the area that was selected. And of course, we've now just got these three columns there. Now the pro version gives you all this stuff here for being able to find tables automatically. So we'll put this back to whole sheet again. And this time we'll turn on auto find tables. We'll apply that, go back to the DISOs and you can see that it's found them automatically. So it's now able to have a look around and find out what the most likely table that you want is going to be. So here's a more extreme version of that. There's, there's at least three places that there might be some tables here. Uh, this one, that one, and this one. But the automatic find capability has been able to figure out that the one you probably want is this one that's here. And the way it does that, go back to settings, is by these settings here. Typically the defaults are what you would want. The way it does it is it finds the thing that looks most like a table that's got the most cells in it. So it's preferred this table over that one because it's a big O. Now it may well be that you want the first table so you can just change this to position and you want to find the first table and we'll apply that. And now what's happened is it says, okay, so that's the table that you really want. But typically you'll find that the default values are perfectly adequate. Another option here is about tolerance. So that's row tolerance and column tolerance, which simply means that you're going to allow a certain amount of blank rows to be included in the table. So now I've set this back to normal. You can see that even though there's a blank row there, it's included it as if it were data. So to read more about that settings, then you could take a look at the documentation for which there'll be a link at the end of the video. So just one more example. So here's an extreme table that's got both a blank row and a blank column in it. And we need to let Dysos know that, in fact, this is just one table that's got some fancy formatting in it. So by default, using the settings that we looked at, it's going to just find one table, this, this one here, in fact. But really, we want to somehow communicate that there are that there is allowed to be blank columns in the table as well. So we can do that through settings. We'll just change the column tolerance to, to one and we'll apply that. And now when we look at the DISOs that it's spotted, it's in fact all of these. So it's now creating that thing as a whole table. And those are all the, the columns. Another pro feature is the ability to set it up so that it's, it saves settings between sheets. So the default behavior is that if I go here and I, let's say I make a selection, let's go back to the first sheet and go to the dices of that. And let's just say I select earth and you know, just that. Then if I go away and come back again, then it doesn't know that I selected earth the previous time on that particular sheet. So if you want to, you can set it up so that it auto saves in each sheet, whatever settings you've applied. Now, you might not always want to do that. In fact, you probably don't want to do that that often. But if you're jumping around between sheets, then it could be useful. So you turn that on with the sort of save selection. And then if we now select, let's say, Earth on here, on this sheet, and we go to some other sheet go over here, and then we go back to that first sheet, then you can see that it's remembered what we had the last time. So it'll remember everything, including the, the settings for the colors that you might change or for the any of these things at the top. So for example, if we said that this was actually a color setting that we were going to use here, and we'll pick um, a couple of colors, and then we go away to another page, then it'll plot the, the other page, and we'll come back to this one. You can see that it's remembered the color selection, and then go back to that page we were just on, and it's remembered its own individual selection as well. So that's quite useful being able to swap between pages and for it to remember what it was. And this other option here is you can make it so that it remembers the settings that you had the last time you were in this document. So when you exit the add-on and come back in, it remembers it from the previous session. Typically, you'd want to not do that because other people will be using the document too if you're in a, a collaboration environment. But in any case, if you do want to remember it between sessions, you can just untick that. Just a word on saving settings. You'll know that in the original version, then if you want to save any settings that you make here for future use, then you have to 
save it either for future use in this document. In other words, every time you come to this document, the settings will be what they were. Or alternatively, you can save uh, current settings for future use in all of my documents. So that means every time you go into any document, the settings that you use will be the same. So what you should do is that once you've decided what your operating mode will be for the, your favorite settings, you can choose one of these and, and apply them. So until you've done that, then the settings apply for the session only. So that's most of what's new for the pro version. This was a, a pretty big update and you can read all about it on my site, which I'll give you the link for in a moment. And if you'd like a, a free trial of the pro version, then just contact me. My details are here and I'll be happy to send you a coupon. If you want to read more about the detail of how the standard part of Dysos work, plus these new pro features, then you can read them at the links that are shown on the screen. And if you're interested in seeing how this stuff gets made, then you can take a look at my book or my Google Apps Script tutorial videos. If you already have the Dysos add-on, then you'll get this update automatically. If you don't, then you should go to the Google Sheets Chrome store and, and install it.